A storm system strengthening across the U.S. will wreak havoc with significant severe weather expected across parts of the southern U.S., including the potential for heavy snow in the Midwest and Northeast. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm Matthew Potter, your community weatherman. So as I alluded to, March is definitely coming in like a lion as we're going to see plenty of severe weather threats across the southern United States and also the potential for the snowfall up in the Midwest and the Northeast. So without further ado, let's get to our forecast. We're going to start off here with our water vapor imagery of the United States. And we see here in the upper Midwest, we have the swirling area of low pressure that had been providing some light to moderate snowfall across the region. And this will continue to dwindle over the next few hours and taper off. And then over here in the southwest uh, United States, we have an area of broad low pressure that's been providing additional rain and snowfall in the mountains across this region. And uh, one last thing to talk about is our severe weather threat that we have uh, this evening and overnight. And we see here that we have uh, some thunderstorms that have actually recently been trying to pop here in the Arkansas area. And actually earlier around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there was actually some ping pong sized hail that had been going on. Now looking at the current radar imagery of the United States, we see that snowfall that's gonna be dwindling, as I said, over the upper Midwest. There is an area of precipitation across the Northeast. It's generally going to be providing some light accumulations of snowfall, especially in some higher elevations. And then there's that additional rain and snow across the Southwest US. And then lastly, here's our severe weather threat that we're going to be monitoring here over the next few hours. And we actually have here, it looks like a, uh, a severe thunderstorm warning that actually just popped up here in Western Arkansas. So, in the, so this will continue on, you know, probably for the next few hours where we'll continue to see some um, severe weather threats. And over the course of the day today, the Storm Prediction Center has actually increased the severe weather threat and uh, tagged an enhanced area from the Arklatex all the way over to uh, northern Mississippi and into um, south, uh, southwest Tennessee. And uh, the main threat here, one of them is going to be a tornado threat, and they actually have a hatched area across this region. And that means that there's going to be a 10% a uh, chance within a 25 mile radius of your area of a strong tornado, which is an EF5 or greater. There is also a threat for some hail. And this is mainly gonna be over Southern Arkansas where they actually have a 30% chance. And this is gonna be, and this is hatched, which means there's a chance for some hail even up to two inches in diameter. And then lastly, there's gonna be a wind threat as well with this. And uh, that's mainly gonna be focused uh, over the areas of like Little Rock, Northern um, Mississippi, and also into Memphis. Now you see here, as we go through the next few hours, the coverage of the thunderstorms will start to increase, and some of these will have some supercell type structures, and this is where we could see the damaging winds, hail, and even some of the strong tornadoes. Now as we head through the evening and the overnight, much of this is going to turn more linear, where the threat is going to be more of like damaging winds. And this will continue on into the overnight and then eventually dwindle as we head toward uh, um, the mo early morning hours on Thursday. Now, there is also going to be a flooding threat for this region as well, particularly across uh, eastern Arkansas into northern Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and a good portion of Tennessee. And this is because that there's going to be the potential for maybe some training thunderstorms. And as a result, uh, most of the area is going to be looking at maybe one to two inches. However, I could see maybe the potential for even greater amounts, maybe three, even four inches, if you have consistent convection over your region. Now, if we look at surface dew points, we see that out ahead of this, there's going to be plenty of dew points in the 60s. And also, we're going to be looking at winds that are going to be very favorable for the development of convection and even severe thunderstorms. We see here that across the Texarkana region, eastern Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, we see that there's going to be plenty of instability. As you see in the shaded, uh, shaded colors, that's where our surface base cape is. And then looking at the winds, the surface winds are going to be directly out of the southeast. And as you go in the height, uh, we're going to be seeing those winds starting to veer out of the southwest. And this will be very favorable for the development of severe thunderstorms that will provide some strong tornadoes, winds, and hail. We see here at 7 p.m. there's a radar depiction of what could be going on. At this point, we might be having some single cell thunderstorms, and some of those could have 
some supercell components to it, which could provide those severe uh, thunderstorms. Um, and as we head through the evening and overnight, that uh, area of thunderstorms is going to turn more into a linear line. But even at this point, there still could be some embedded um, uh, strong tornadoes within this line, which will also include damaging winds and even some hail. And as we head toward the uh, early morning hours on Friday, that line will continue on into parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and also into uh, parts of Tennessee. And we can even see there's even a depiction of some snowfall at this point in Oklahoma and in Kansas. As a result of all this severe weather, the Storm uh, Prediction Center is going for a pretty broad area of severe storms. Now, the greatest threat, as you see here, is going to be in the Arklatex uh, region, where they actually have a moderate area of severe weather predicted. Um, and this will include just uh, portions east of Dallas, also Shreveport, and into southwest portions of Arkansas. And we are going to see that threat for strong tornadoes of EF2 or greater, as is pointed out by this hatched area. And that means there could be a strong tornado of an EF2 or greater rating um, within 25 miles of your location. So you're going to have to be very cognizant in this region for tomorrow. Now, there's also going to be a hail threat with this as well. Now, the hail threat will mostly be early on. As you see here, they have a 30% chance um, a little further toward the west, including Dallas, and into a little bit of Shreveport and also southwestern Arkansas. Right now, they have a 30% chance of this. And then the most um, concerning aspect of this whole event will be the damaging winds. And you see here, they have a fairly large area that's hatched, which means there could be winds of 65 knots or greater uh, within 25 miles of your location. Now you see here they are focusing on the Arklatex region with a 45% chance of seeing severe damaging winds. So you definitely want to pay attention tomorrow evening and tomorrow night as this uh, storm complex moves through. Now there is also going to be a flooding threat as well. This is a, a model pr uh, prediction of what the amounts of rain could be. Uh, mostly we're looking at one to three inches in a pretty broad area. Now, I wouldn't even be surprised if there's some higher amounts, especially in areas where the convection is going to be uh, training over your region. So definitely keep in mind of the flooding threat for tomorrow night. Now, as I said, as a result of this flooding, the Weather Prediction Center is showing that there is going to be a moderate risk for flooding in portions of uh, northern Arkansas and also into southern Missouri. So once we get into Friday morning, this uh, uh, low pressure system that was over Texas is going to be centered over Arkansas. And basically at this point, the trough is going to be negatively tilted. And as a result, this is going to show that we have a strengthening low pressure system. And sure enough, we have a 981 uh, millibar low pressure system that's going to be over this region. And you can even see that we are going to start to see the potential for snow developing on the northern end of the heavy rain. And by this point, the heavy rain is going to be over southern Missouri, Illinois, and also Indiana. And as I said, we will continue to see that severe weather threat to the south of that into Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee um, uh, Friday morning. Now, as we continue on into the day, you can see that on the northwest side of the low pressure, there is the potential for very heavy snow. And this will include rates of one to two inches per hour. And at this point, you're not going to want to travel outside. And this is going to be uh, the case in northern Missouri, parts of Iowa, and also northern Illinois. So definitely keep in mind of this potential as we head into Friday. And we will also continue to see heavy rain, especially to Ohio, uh, Indiana, and also into Kentucky. And that severe weather threat will be to the south um, of that region into portions of Tennessee, Georgia, and the Carolinas. And this will be particularly the case as we head into the later part of the day. And you see here by 7 p.m. on Friday, that snow is going to continue on into parts of Chicago, Milwaukee, and central Michigan. Now, there's also going to be maybe uh, some wintry weather starting to develop over portions of Pennsylvania and southern New York. Um, and then also um, that severe weather threat, as I said, is going to continue on into the Carolinas and into Georgia. And this will be the case into the overnight hours. And by this point, New England could start to see some uh, snow at this point. And maybe even a little bit of a wintry mix will start to go into southern portions of the region as well, including New York. 
And then by 7 a.m. on Saturday, we see that that um, uh, severe threat's probably going to be ending as most of the uh, severe uh, weather is going to shift offshore. And then up into New England, we continue to see wintry weather with some wintry mix as we get into uh, parts of uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. And by this point, we also see that that low pressure system that was over the Midwest is now going to be transferring some of its energy over to a coastal low at this point. But the coastal low is not necessarily going to be very strong. Now, as a result of the severe weather, um, the potential, the Storm Prediction Center is going for a slight risk uh, in this general region. So you are going to have to continue to monitor the chance of severe weather at this point. And then, as I said, in Indiana and Ohio, there is going to be a slight risk of flooding. So you are going to have to pay attention to this as well. Now, for the snowfall threat, there's been various models showing different things. Uh, for example, right now the European is showing a uh, axis of heavy snow through Illinois and also into central Michigan. Now the GFS on the other hand is a little bit less bullish in these regions and the heaviest snowfall is actually south of Chicago into northern Illinois into south and southeastern uh, Michigan. And this will also be the case into the northeast where there's a little bit of differences between these two models. And we see that uh, there's actually a little bit less snowfall on the European in portions of Pennsylvania, southern, uh, central southern New York, and also into Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. And this is because that it is showing a little bit more mixing, and it's also showing a lot more aggressive southerly push of warmer air into the region. So this could potentially cut down on your totals if the European ends up being right. Now, if the GFS is right, and it holds back the warmer surge of air, and it develops the coastal low a little bit quicker, you could see some stronger or you could see some higher snowfall totals into portions of interior New England. You see here the GFS is actually depicting some snowfall totals of uh, one to two feet in parts of New York, New Hampshire, uh, Vermont, and also uh, Massachusetts. So as you see, we have a lot of threats going on from the severe weather over the next couple of days across the southern U.S. and also some flooding and also the potential for some very heavy snowfall across portions of the Midwest and also the Northeast. So you do want to continue to monitor your local forecast from the National Weather Service. And also, if you are in the way of any severe weather, please, please pay attention to your local meteorologist. And also, if you have a NOAA weather radio, those are very helpful as well to keep you up to date on the latest weather that's going on in your region. Thank you very much for watching my video. Smash that like button if you enjoyed my video. Please comment and also please subscribe to my channel to see more forecasts like this and other weather-related content. Thanks once again, and I'll be sure to see you soon.